Shaky Wait. camera, shaky camera. The camera is shaking. Woo woo. We're waiting on the teenager. God, you're a, you're a mess. Ew. <laughs> you better. Some pause. No, you better delete that. <laughs> it will be edited out of the video, but go ahead and get. Oh, I just stepped on it. Welcome back to the Asian Pirate Channel, and today we're talking Star Trek. Is it really broken? Okay, so we're going to go into some history, and then we're going to go into my reasonings as to what is wrong with Star Trek today and what can be done to fix it. So first off, what is Star Trek? Star Trek in the 1960s, Gene Roddenberry pitched this show to the networks as a wagon train to the stars. And you have to understand, back in the 60s, westerns were one of the biggest genres of television out there besides comedies. And so this was Roddenberry's way of pitching the show to NBC. The problem is, you know, science fiction was not taken very seriously, especially back then. All you have to do is look at the Irwin Allen series of the time, like Lost in Space or... Land of the Giants, or Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea, and you will understand, they were all very campy science fiction shows, and they weren't taken seriously at all. Then, in the 1980s, Gene Roddenberry made the push to try to bring Star Trek back to television with Star Trek Phase 2. And he went through a lot of preparation process to get that going, um... Unfortunately, for whatever reasons, the studios decided not to go forward with that. Uh, Gene Roddenberry ultimately took all that pre-planning and repurposed it for Star Trek The Motion Picture. Thus, the Star Trek motion picture industry was born. In the 1980s, when Gene Roddenberry was in the process of preparing Star Trek Phase 2 for TV, he wanted to take away the silly facets of the original series and make Star Trek more serious. And when Phase 2 ultimately became the motion picture, something amazing truly occurred. Star Trek had grown up. And not only did we lose the silliness of the original 60s science fiction, but our cast of characters became more interesting and multifaceted. They had a truly interesting backstory. And the sets, while still realistically small, served as believable backdrops for telling these wonderful tales. The ships themselves were finally being treated as just as important as their human counterparts. The exterior space shots were beautiful and majestic. The vessels swam through space with the grace of dolphins. The music swelled with pride as these ships would cross the threshold of the screen. The effects for things like warp travel, phasers, photon torpedoes were always somewhat standardized, though they did get tweaks as CG technology improved. The storytelling became more intelligent. The techno babble was relevant to the story, and if by chance it was total fiction, the writers were able to sell it as completely believable science. And Star Trek became a place where stories mirrored real life, and our characters dealt with real moral and ethical dilemmas. The first duty of every Starfleet officer is to the truth, whether it's scientific truth or historical truth or personal truth. It is the guiding principle on which Starfleet is based. Even though these explorers lived in a utopian society, it was never depicted as a perfect society. Yes, many things had been overcome by the 24th century, but there was always a growing pain right around the corner for our crews to overcome. And the quality of Star Trek continued on through such great series like The Next Generation, Deep Space Nine, Voyager, and Enterprise. 
Then after the wrongful early cancellation of Enterprise, Star Trek went on a long hiatus. It's my belief that the, at this time that the studio had felt that Star Trek failed because it just wasn't current with the times. The thing that I think really caused Star Trek to fail at that time was the lack of a stable home. Uh, Enterprise was in its fourth season on UPN. UPN was a sinking ship at this point. And when you look at shows like The Next Generation and Deep Space Nine, they were, they were franchised and sold to independent networks through the, through the Paramount Franchise Network. And it was through franchise that those series were very successful. And I think that it was because through franchising, uh, this allowed networks to air these shows whenever they wanted to and fit it into a time slot that suited their needs. Um, Voyager was able to complete its seven season run on UPN. Uh, UPN was still somewhat viable at that point. As far as Enterprise goes, I will say this. I truly believe that if CBS had decided to reintroduce Enterprise to the fans on its flagship CBS network, uh, Enterprise could have completed a full seven season run. Um, everyone will agree that just like every other Trek series, as Enterprise grew, the writing and the storytelling got better. And, and season four was pretty much its greatest season at that point. Not counting the ending, of course. Fast forward to 2009, and we have a beloved franchise whose ownership has been split between two business entities, CBS Television and Paramount Studios. That alone, I think, was a huge mistake. Um, but this division of rights allowed J.J. Abrams and his bad robot production company to pitch a reboot of Star Trek to Paramount. And in their greed, Paramount allowed sweeping changes that not only changed the face of the franchise on the silver screen, but also made it necessary for Alex Kurtzman to follow suit with the rebooted Trek series of Discovery and Picard. So now here we are in 2020, while the new Trek has a fan base all of its own, little has been done to win over the old guard fans. We have to ask ourselves, what has been broken with Star Trek? First of all, the complete disregard of Star Trek canon. And this was a big problem with many of the old guard fans. And by the time Alex Kurtzman and CBS had realized their folly, they had literally painted themselves into a canonical corner that they could not get themselves out of. It became so bad that the only way to get themselves out of that corner was to fling Discovery 800 plus years into the future at the end of season two. And they sent Discovery into a future where the Federation has collapsed and is no longer the superpower of the Alpha Quadrant. And if I am to be completely honest here, it seems as if Rod Roddenberry at Roddenberry Productions has stolen this idea from Gene Roddenberry's series Andromeda, in which Captain Hunt and his ship, the Andromeda Ascendant, had been thrown through a wormhole into the far future where his entire world had disappeared. The next problem we have is the writer's room for Trek. The members of the so-called Fandom Menace would say that the writing has been terrible. I will be gracious enough to say that is not the case. If these people had been writing for any other science fiction series, the stories would have been adequate. I will say that after watching two seasons of Discovery and a season of Picard, my biggest problem with the writing is that these people really don't understand the material of Trek. 
in line with the writing issues is the problem of leadership. Ever since the days of TNG, Gene Roddenberry was the final voice of what went into Trek until his passing. And during this time, he was grooming Rick Berman to be a successor, thankfully. And while each show after that had its own executive producer or two, Rick was the god of Star Trek, and nothing was done without his approval. So when we look at Star Trek today, and you look at the opening credits, and you see the executive producers have become a committee. We have, in, in Discovery alone, we probably have six or eight executive producers. And that brings to mind the old saying about too many chiefs and not enough Indians. My biggest gripe about the new Trek series, though, is production design. CBS was so convinced that the visuals of these shows were so outdated that they decided that everything needed to look grander and more cinematic. <laughs> Larger than life. But what they have done is make the series look dark and foreboding and impersonal. And to catch each character at their stations means huge camera transitions. I have a huge problem with the re-imaging of the aliens of Trek as well as the ships and the effects overall. The weapons fire effects are a joke and warp travel has become this swirling, violent, psychedelic sprint through space. I think the budget is the biggest reason why we have 10 or 12 serialized seasons instead of the traditional 20-plus episodic seasons that we used to get with Star Trek. Clearly, Viacom CBS hasn't gotten the idea in their heads that a lot of times, less is more. Instead of running multiple series, we should have had one or two great series with 20-plus episodes like we used to have on network or, or franchise TV. I think now that the streaming platforms have proven themselves as a viable option for entertainment, they should really take a look at expanding these shows um, definitely into bigger, longer seasons. So that is my take on what is wrong with Star Trek now. And as you guys have been following my channel, have seen this week, CBS has officially announced the pre-production of the Pike series, Strange New Worlds. And in Anson Mount's announcement, he says that they are going to be going back to the original formula for Star Trek. And it's to me, it seems like hopefully CBS is realizing the error of their ways and they're going to go more episodic and um, that the show is going to have more of the classic feel of Star Trek that we're used to having from the old series. Um, I certainly hope they do something to fix the production design. And I hope that they give us more episodes with this new series. Star Trek, at its roots, was episodic. It was personal. It was moral. And we need to get back to a series that we would be proud to show our children. And not this garbage that we've been getting with Discovery and J.J. Trek. And that's it for this episode of The Asian Pirate. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my channel, hit the bell icon to receive future notifications, and give this video a thumbs up so others can find it as well. This is The Asian Pirate. Live long and prosper.